Hello everyone! Welcome to another stream of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. We are here with Harry Butts. Or Larry Butts. Oh god, I forgot the name already. It's cringy. And we're here in this strange room. This strange, suspicious room where Master Mask is. Yeah, this game is starting very strange. There's no murder. And it's just a very, very strange case. This is very strange. Oh, I think someone has arrived. Who's first? Let's see. It's D. Williams. How you doing? What's up? So we talked with him completely. Let's uh, let's present something like the key card. <coughs> So you're sure about this key card? Yep, that's the key card we use at the building I work in. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You needed to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. It leaves a record? Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Larry, you need that data. Whoa, slow down, man. Sorry, but that data is off limits to outsiders. If I lost this job, I'd, have a, I'd never have a chance with Desi. It's times like these when I wish lawyers weren't so powerless. Ouch. And what about, uh, the blackmail letter? You'll tune in as soon as you remember to? <laughs> Alrighty. You're tuned in now, though. What? Hey, Foursquare. Sword? Here's a sword for you. How do you like this sword? There's, uh, seven blades on it. It's seven swords in one sword. Cool, huh? <clears throat> hey, Larry, what about this? What? If you got something to say, then say it already. Huh? A blackmail letter? Do you know anything about this? What? 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 I don't know anything about Alexis, and that's the truth. Huh? What? I can't believe you do this to me. I thought you were my friend. $50,000? I don't have that kind of money. No, no, you don't understand. This blackmail letter was sent to Ron Delight. Woo! Man, you scared me. I almost had a heart attack, you idiot. Wait, I'm the idiot? Man, I was totally confused because it said KB Security right on the envelope. Um, yeah, so what? <clears throat> That's where I got a part-time job at KB Security. What? What? Sounds like I really should find out more about this KB Security company. You mean as soon as you do, you just then... I gotcha. A dog did a speedrun at GDQ, it was very wholesome. <laughs> a dog? An actual doggy? Well, I'm glad you guys are here. It's good to see you. See you guys. KB Security, the company in the blackmail letter. You know about it? That's where I work, yeah. In fact, I'm the on the job right now. Huh? So what are you doing here then? Well, the boss is away right now. You know what mice do when the cat's away. The goodest of boys. Wow. I want to see it. I want to see this speedrun. How far away is this company? Let me see. About 30 minutes by car, I guess. What if you fly down the road anyway? Hmm. Well, this apartment building is pretty close to Lordly Taylor, right? And it would take roughly an hour to go from here to KB Security and back. If Ronda Light was at KB Security when the robbery occurred, then... Wow. Then he couldn't have stolen the sacred urn. Urn. <clears throat> Alrighty, I'll check it after, uh, Foursquare. Beep! H hello Is this the right residence? Ah, Pearls, where are you? I, I thought I'd go to Lordly Taylor to try and find more clues, but I'm afraid I've gotten lost. What? Give me that phone, Nick. But Pearly, where are you right now? Um, I was walking along and I found myself in front of that person's office. That person? Who? Um, that person who doesn't act as agent always says Zavari when he's excited. Uh, Luke Atme, at Ace Detective. Hey, Mafia babe! Welcome back. You're just in time. Little Pearl is lost. And, uh, we're gonna save her. But, uh, it's good to see ya. How was your day? We're coming to get you. Uh, alright. Uh, I'm a little scared. Alright, let's go, Maya. Wait a second, Nick. What? What? That phone call just now. Says it sounded like a real cutie. Another one of your, ahem, special friends. 
Say goodbye to Miss Delight for me, would you, Larry? We're out of here. Alright, let's go to the detective agency. And rescue Pearl. Day was alright, you just woke up. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome to the game. Ah! Mr. Nick! Mr. Kamaya! Pearly! I never thought I'd see the two of you again! <clears throat> so is Mr. Ace Detective out of the office? Yes, when I arrived here. There wasn't a single soul in sight. Say, Nick, doesn't it look like something's changed since we were here last? Now that you mention it? Hmm... Pretty sure this bag wasn't here before. Alright. Let's check it out. This bag. I'm sure it wasn't here before. It looks quite full. I wonder what could be in here. Hey, Nick. Come on. Open it up. Hey, wait a minute. We can't just open this private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. That's true. And truth be told, I have to admit I'm kind of curious. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Well, hello there. Eek! He's here! Hey, Captain Chips. Welcome back to the stream. <laughs> You're just in time. We rescued Pearl and ran into the detective after attempting to look in his bag. What are you doing, Sir Lawyer? I'm shocked to see a servant of the court. Ignoring the law so flagrantly. Uh, I'm really sorry. Maya made me do it. Nick, I can't believe you. A gentleman never uses a lady as an excuse for his own poor behavior. The real question is, can you afford to waste time lollygagging around here? What, what do you mean by that? Perhaps I should make myself more clear. Tomorrow's trial? Zavari. Shall we say the figurative Sir William will be dropping his panties before lunchtime? Wow, Nick. Sounds like it's gonna be really exciting. Alright, let's talk to this wacko. Um, what's going to happen at the trial tomorrow that's so dramatic? Do you know what your biggest mistake so far has been, Sir Lawyer? It was becoming a lawyer in the first place. That certainly does sound like a big mistake, Mr. Nick. Tomorrow will be a day to remember. I, Luke Etime, will take the stand. And then, Zavari, my testimony will prove to be the undoing of the lot of you. Yes, all of you. I will unmask you as the thief's co-conspirators. C-c-conspirators? <laughs> You're quick on the defensive, I see. However, it is not I that is your greatest enemy. There is a far more dangerous threat to you that you will face during the trial. What What are you talking about? Sir Lawyer, if you truly are who you say, I'm sure you've heard of him. His name is Godot. Or Godot, which is the proper word way to say that. G godot You have taken a step down the path of foolishness. To try to defend the career criminal who deserves nothing less than the death penalty... Hey, last time I checked, no one knows for sure that Mr. Delight is really messed to mask. <laughs> My dear lady, times may change, but people sadly do not. Well, you will understand when this when you are more mature. Um, who is this Godot person? It's not surprising that a spirit medium has not heard the name. Godot, the prosecutor whose equal cannot be found in this country, but in heaven. Are you going to play the Ace Attorney Chronicles after this game? Do you mean, uh... Do you mean this game here? Not after this game. But, uh, eventually I want to. Godot, the legend or myth. A legend or myth. Men pin a lifetime of hopes on the chance to simply meet him. Prosecutor Godot? But the best prosecutor in the country isn't Godot. It's Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, Nick? <coughs> It's no surprise that a spirit medium such as yourself would know nothing of this, but Ace Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth is currently traveling abroad. Huh? In fact, it was Mr. Edgeworth who acknowledged Godot as the best in this country. There was a letter the other day that I found Mr. Edgeworth, and he said Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death again! <laughs> and you agree with that? 
Most certainly. In fact, you could call him the Luke Atme of the prosecutor's office. Well, that's good to hear. The prosecution has a fighting chance tomorrow. Mr. Nick, is this Godot really that strong? Hmm, I seem to remember hearing about someone like that. Not surprising. Some people spend their entire lives idly waiting for his appearance. Looks like we're done investigating for the day. <laughs> Sir Lawyer, the stage has been set and all the pieces are finally in place. All that remains now is for the dance to begin. <clears throat> a new prosecutor, an ace detective, and a thief. This will be one tough trial. You want to know when it happens? Oh, you'll know. You'll know. Ah, ah. Well, is everyone ready for a brand new prosecutor? <clears throat> hey, Nick. What is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy. Oh, so check out the Mest MS glossy I bought. You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. I got a photo. You call him Cyclops from X-Men? <laughs> cool. <clears throat> Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it. I'm the criminal. Me, me, me. <clears throat> uh, he's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor. I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, uh, urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally, when I say of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you? Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me the guilty, a guilty verdict. Please! Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, did Desi, honey. Bonjour! Well, actually... I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, er, uh, well, uh, you see, actually the thief is, er, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So, why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if, you're, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck! Who could it be, guys? Who is the real Master Mask, if Ron is not Master Mask? To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is Master Mask or not, but there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn, urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust it, Desiree. <clears throat> and here we go. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. What, what did you say? Fine. Let me ask you this then, Your Honor. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? Well, n no, I, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I am Godot, legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. Ah, he's the one that Detective Atme was talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Ha, none. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. N never But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? <laughs> I use that line all the time. Scruffy damn lawyer. I know this jazz music is. Top notch, bro. Top notch music. Even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask? In a court of law? Ha. Don't you know anything? 
No matter the man, we all wear masks, either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy is the real deal, all right, Nick? Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet, Mr. Phoenix Trite. N Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this mess man? I'm returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, er, Prosecutor Gobo. It's not Gobo, it's Godo, your honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. Wonder if that meant he was defense attorney before? Can't fault his logic. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <clears throat> what is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder. How much you can withstand before you and your case break in two? Hmm, well then, let's hear from the first witness. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Urk. The important thing is what you know, that's all. Start talking, we're listening. Y yes sir. Alright, witness, first let's hear about... What you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes sir. <clears throat> Mr. Mass Crimes Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card even before he commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after the most precious art pieces. That's why we're sure it was Master Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. Hmm. So then the actual identity of this Master Mask is... M mr Godot! Wh what are you... We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Godot. Blacker than a moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself, that is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Very well, it's only coffee after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that it wasn't Master Mask who stole the urn. <clears throat> so, would he get in trouble for drinking coffee for, uh, during a trial? Master Mask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yep, nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. It's true, I'm a Zavari, author on thieves. An author? He's writing books about thieves? Um, I think he probably meant to say authority. The fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. It's easy when those fingers happen to be butterfingers. Uh, it's coffee, not crack. <laughs> so he would be fine. He'd be like, yeah... It's fine. Everyone's fine. Um, so nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal. Except maybe for the thief's mom, that is. But isn't there someone who knows mo even more about him than the police? You don't mean Detective Zavari, do you? Hmm, who is this person? Zavari? He sounds German. His name is Luke Atme, sir. I guess I shouldn't have made him up such a silly name for him. What the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Erk. It looks like the thief is toying with me even now. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. I think it's unprecedented, so it's up to the jury for having the contraband. <laughs> What's contraband again? I'm so bad with these big words. Have you seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have, except the person in charge of the treasure exhibit never brought their card to the police, so I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. That's because Detective, At Detective Atme stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Was the calling card that Lord L that Lordly Taylor received authentic? 
Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature, but we're not releasing that information to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real? Gumshoe can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about Master Mass's emblem. Then that's supposed to be here out of the ordinary? So, coffee? Is, is that what you're talking about? This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lord Lordly Taylor. His fifth heist, and your fifth screw-up, huh? Objection, pal. That ain't fair. Maybe you could say I screwed up four times. But this last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time. You of all people shouldn't be chuckling about this, Detective Gumshoe. I just want everyone here in this courtroom to know something. Ever get a calling card from this guy? Don't call some stupid private eye. Call your local police right away, got me? Wow, looks like he's really got it in for Detective Atme. <laughs> His pattern is always supposed to go after the most precious art pieces. Art pieces? Like what, for example? Well, its first target was the famous Tear of Amenon. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? N no sir, it's a blue diamond. A single rare diamond. Next was the Crown of Bongora. You know, the thing you put on your head. After that was the left hand of Hades, and then the portrait of Magina, sir. Dittive may retrieve the portrait of Mag Magina and return it to the museum. And that target of his fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? Urn. But isn't it difficult to, to, for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some underworld connections. Somehow, Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. Is adject is adjective and it applies to the coffee. I gotcha. Sounds good, my dude. Most precious, huh? But isn't this thing, uh, not pricey? Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing that little in the question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. What? Well, what do you mean? N Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers that I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it, and I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mass to Mask would normally go after. Urk. Hmm, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Mass to Mask. Y yes that's what I'm saying. Actually, all they did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mass to Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? <clears throat> this coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot uh, number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got in my mind right now, Mr. Trite. What? what If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it wasn't Mass to Mass that stole the urn, then it must be someone in imitating Mass to Mass's methods of fake. A, a fake Damask? Fake Damask? That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. This game makes you want to explain things for some reason. <laughs> explain, uh... Things unrelated to this case. Uh, first of all... Remember, like, no spoilers and stuff. Just in case you get the, the urge again. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm. Oh, I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior. His point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. Looks like I'm going to have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lordly Taylor that night was, in fact, fake Damask. Uh... You asked coffee's... You asked... If coffee's illegal, explain so yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's fine. 
I forgot the answer here. So that's why I have this special, uh, guide. I have a guide up at all times, just in case I don't know what the right answer is. So give me, uh, give me uh, a second, guys. This is top-notch, uh, streaming right here, guys. Top-notch. Uh, okay. Security camera photo. Like I said, it, it, it's been a while. I forgot, like, a lot of the things about this case. Uh, the proof is right here. <clears throat> this looks like a photo taken by the security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Ha. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is. Go on, use this pointer and show us just what is peculiar about this picture's peculiar. I think it's right here. It's right here, of course. You mean, mess to mask? I have here a picture of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't it the publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on, mess on the mess's chest. A breach? Here? Bailiff, get my steed! We need to retreat at once! A brooch, your honor. It's a sort of clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. But the mess to mess in the security camera photo... Ah, he has no brooch! The brooch is the same as the emblem on Dimesh's calling card and serves as his symbol. But the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words... This mess to mask is a fake! I I've been fooled again! Uh, order! It's true! Undeniably true! Detective Gumshoe, how how could you have overlooked this? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I... Oh, you got a, a new cup. Hey now, if you're gonna have a pity party, invite me too. Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame in this too. How can you have just... How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Ha, the brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Ah, but that's Mr. Mass's brooch. Well, where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I've got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? He must mean the Ami face statue. Well, why didn't you tell me about that, sir? <clears throat> I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Grr, this guy is one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. H hickeys Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ronda Light's fingerprints. What? What? The defense's fingerprints are on the brooch? Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch! I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appeared to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. We got a problem. Ha. You mess with Godot. And you get burned. Grr, he's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. Bailiff, bring in the next bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally, time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? <coughs> One second, one second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh! Silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What? What's clear? Zavari! 
The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor, a coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, well yes, that's right. Ha, not bad, not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Atme, a detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each, other's, tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred detective gumshoes. The detective gumshoe was even worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyways? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Well then, let us tell us what the special monikers of yours... Monocle of yours witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mess, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that, that evening. Well, Sir Old Timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but on the but of the King of Thieves, the Great Master Mask, my arch enemy. That is why my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. What I witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. So that would be one o'clock on the morning of on the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, Sir Lawyer. You were on security duty that night. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question. I was in the basement warehouse, near the computer. Near the computer, huh? So then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it? Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said that they've never spotted the thief at the crime scene before. Precisely. That is precisely why I chose not to hide last night. I knew that by not concealing myself, I would be putting pressure on the thief. Looks like the thief was the one applying pressure. On your pigeony head, that is. In any case... That's when my nemesis, the infamous Master Mask, dancingly descended upon me. <clears throat> dancingly descended? From where, exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um, so how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. It can only be due to his sub -su subtly camouflaged keep and soft soled shoes. I hereby dub you a stunt. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened? Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask, that's all I can recall. Hmm, that's not a very solid as far as testimony goes. However, fortunately I had my third monocle, the security camera, at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be a sufficient, I believe. Hmm, well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Good, then let's continue with the testimony. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing? That's certainly some very impressive detective work. Hmm, well, Sir Lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? W well, actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. And what happened? I... I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. 
You see? You have no right to look down on me then, do you? The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. He may have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection parts used to be severed. In any case, that was how I was knocked senseless, and then... Thirty minutes later, I use an emergency phone to notify the police. Let's go back to this one. And let's do... This! Never mind! Let's instead go back to the guide because I completely forgot. It happens. It happens. My memory is poopy. Oh, thank you, phone, for being so slow, too. Okay, uh, it was this. I'd like to get in my chat room, please, phone. Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha, uh -huh, this belonged to the criminal mastermind and my arch, uh, my arch nemesis, Master Mask. It is, in point of fact, Master Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. Wonder how that happened. Ha, huh, elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. It clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! You can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on the security detail duty that night. You, Detective Atme! Erk! Detective Etme, you may have you must have fought with the Vic Thief last night. So, why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. Er, I n no. Wait just a moment, Sir Old Timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. <laughs> I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The truth the true measure of a man is in the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much. Glued, it's a brooch, it's supposed to be pinned or clipped. <laughs> yep. Oh, this detective guy. Witness, so are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Uh, excuse me? Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I, Luquette, may agree completely. Fight with the thief. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, Luquette may cannot be so easily discombobulated. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were no, not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. Pin clipped or sued? Oh, pinned, clipped, or sued. Yep. <laughs> so, in the end, did you catch a glimpse of Master Mask? Correct. It was during this third crime that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. Th that can't be good. <clears throat> Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the from the door for a brief moment. So, what did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I had prepared a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm on one of those has gone off. So I had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer. Elegantly, of course. So you were mo mo momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer? What should I do? Should I ask some more questions? Uh, about the computer. So did that computer belong to Lordly Taylor as well? Correct. Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specially designed by me, Luke Atme. In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. Hehehehehe. <laughs> What's wrong, Sir Lawyer? 
However, Luke Esme cannot be so easily discombobulated. Um, what does that mean, discombobulated? Hmm, young people these days, they really irritate me. They allow perfectly good old words to die until they forget what they mean. Till everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? Now I've forgotten. What was I saying? Gee, it's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Well, it looks like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, the thief had no idea that I, Luke Esme, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue and that was standing by the door into the warehouse. Sword? You mean the sword that was all twisted like a big tree branch? Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Sichi Shito. So the thief armed himself with a sword. And what about yourself, witness? A Chu gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course, in college I was the second in charge of the boxing club. Sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Mass de Mass. This guy is a real piece of work. His first blow struck me true. Bam, and that's all she wrote. So let's go back. Which one was the uh one we had to do the thing with? About the sensor. What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. I hooked up heat detecting infrared and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. That's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? Lordly Taylor Department Store was kind enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Naturally, the security camera that took the photo belonged to them as well. In other words, you couldn't have rigged the equipment, huh? <laughs> Has that cleared up any doubts for you heard about me, Sir Lawyer? Uh, his first blow struck true and then bang. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powericious. But powericious? I assume the at made fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That of course was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? Luke fighting style? <clears throat> what is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say anymore. But, I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? Of course it's important. You've learned a detective's secret technique after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information of yours to the official testimony. I put my back to the wall to fight, but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Now I think I do this. Detective Atme, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, Sir Lawyer. It is truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just how... but just now you testify that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Erk. It seems I've made another mistake. Detective Etne, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. What, what do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Erk. Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. That's wrong. To err is human, to forgive divine. 
Humans aren't machines. They have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate, and yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on. It's not as pretty as that. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Just in case we need evidence. Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... Uh, Mr. Atme is no ace detective. This Mr. Atme is a fake. Mr. Atme is Masty Mask! The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Loot Atme's true identity is actually Master Mask. Yard. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Atme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and... the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. But that's because... I analyzed the crime scene data and made... I made an exquisitely delicate deduction. I picked up clues that, are the, that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh please, the explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Atme. The truth is that you are in fact Master Mask. Yerk. But Mr. Wright, but this photo, it clearly shows Master Mask. The security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been he shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security, and he simply dressed up as a th thief and stole the urn. So, the Ace Detective is actually an Ace Thief? Is this true, Witness? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Dimas is a most pure genius, and so am I, Luke Atme, Ace Detective. You're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I am impressed, Mr. Lawyer. Good, good lawyer. What? what Witness, you, you're admitting it? Nick, Nick now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Atme, when you assume the thief's identity- Oh dear. Go dot blend 102, my personal favorite. Mr. Godot! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best-selling novel. There's only one problem, it simply isn't true. So, would he get in trouble for doing that now, <laughs> Captain Chips? Would that be, uh, trouble-worthy? But, but Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of a whole cloth, but it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. Nah, he'd have full right to object to the accusation. What? Who would have a full right to ob object? If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Referring to the throwing of the mug. Yeah, throwing the mug at, uh, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see the decisive proof you have, quickly. Huh? Oh, y yes, of course. What's the big rush? Are you all right, Nick? That man looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can, but I can I can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is in fact Mr. Mask. Uh, then get him bailiffed. Assault with a weapon, 15 years. Damn. Proof? Of course I I. I've got nothing. Ha, just what I thought. A man has to hold up his hold his head up high, no matter how bad things get, after all. Uh, I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy is the thief. Don't give up, Nick. 
think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But, but, are you going to just give up and let us lose, lose this? So, you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I, uh, uh I can't think of a counterattack at all. It seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness is lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... Huh? What? Who? Who? Oh! Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Miss Delight, what are you doing here? Nicky boy, the thing you've been looking for. I think I found it. You mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well... But that's... The sacred urn! Nick, it's the urn! Well... Order, order, order! You, madame! That urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective, Luke Atme. Oh, Desi, you're the best! And look at it, it's fixed. And there's pink crap on it. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Atme? Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Ha. Pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved? Before casting super aspirations at Detective Atme, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight, is that correct? Y yes what about it? Ha. How charming. The length that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What, what are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just bought it here from the detective's office. Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong! I would never! I would never do such a thing! Miss Delight, please, Nicky boy, you've got to help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Irma's was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. Uh, you should show the fingerprints. I can prove where the urn was by the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come now. Now you're really making me laugh, Sir Lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. May I go on? Good. Now, it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I am always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? The, this witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. N Nick, what are you going to do now? I've come too far to turn back now. Amy must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. I think, uh... The fingerprints of... Phoenix Wright. So what is all the fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Atme, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey Nick, come on, open it up! Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open this private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy, this is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? Uh, hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kinda hard and smooth. Well, hello there! <coughs> It's true that I didn't get a chance to look at the bag, in the bag at the time, but I did touch what was inside. What? what You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. What? well, er, th that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to, to examine the fingerprints on the that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in Detective Atme's office. 
Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. What, what, what did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was... Yesterday, at the Atme Detective Agency. Ha. This blend, Godot Blend 107, Godot Blend, I've decided it is, it's a little too bitter after all. <laughs> His mask was smoking. Order, order, order! I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait. Wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. N no need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. Wh what are you saying? Yes, I've finally broken him down. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Master Mask. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy my little performance. <laughs> and we got him. <clears throat> we got him. Well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Atme's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing as in laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. What? What? You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Er, um, I mean... Not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. This can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief, who's been stealing all of the treasures. Odio? What? It's me. I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please! Alright, we're not done yet, guys. I don't know what kind of kangaroo court you all think this is, but... The true identity of the thief has been already been proven. Please hurry and pass judge... What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Godot, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Ha. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y yes, yes, sir? If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are mess to mess, then prove it. That's what it means. Y yes sir, I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kinda cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy, is only, a, bo a boy only gets one chance in his life to become a man. I, I know that. I won't fail, I swear. Okay, then, talk. We're all listening. Oh, well. Let's all have a listen to this confession. Yeah, I told you, Captain Chips. This case is weird. The truth is, I've been messed to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not actually messed to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night of the... The, the urn was stolen, after all. I on my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo. That's me. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and got it torn off. I, that's all. Hmm. I don't like the direction this trial is taken, but this is how every trial goes. At least with me, anyway. Ha. You're doing great. Hee hee hee. Stop it, Mr. Godot. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise, too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true mask to mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Godot. I, I'll do my best. 
All right, Mr. Wright, I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. Uh... What a guy. The truth is, I've been Master Mask all along. <clears throat> you may think you're the real Master Mask, but your wife thinks you're delusional. I haven't told Desi yet about my true identity, I mean. Believe me, I've got my reasons. But the way your room is decked out, how could she not know about it? Hmm, even thieves have complicated family situations, I suppose. What should I do? Sounds like we're about to get sidetracked again. So why are you withholding the truth from your wife? Well, first of all, I don't think she'd believe me anyway. And second, if there's one thing that Desi absolutely detests, it's criminals. If that's the case, then why did you ever start thieving to begin with? Well, Desi isn't crazy about shopping. She's a real shopaholic. But she's the love of my life, Your Honor. I guess you could say I'm a Desi-holic. Hmm, so you do have a complicated family situation after all. All right, that's enough. Please continue with your testimony. I beg of you. <clears throat> I mean, you can't prove I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually messed a mess, can you? Actually, I think we can do uh, this one. You don't have an alibi. Except... I do. You do have an alibi. Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, y yes, it does. I had lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Uh, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? <coughs> er, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime. But I know I still had it with, with when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was in fact at KB Security that night. No! If the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that proves that he had a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry anyway. Psychological Anthropy Captain Chips, that's a... that's it, a.k.a. a psychopath. <laughs> this guy. This delight guy. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? Now stop drinking that coffee! Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me Thief, Mr. Godot. Alright, I'll try. I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Yeah, he's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there and not make and not at the heist. Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? The keycard at KB Security CEO's office. No! Ha! That was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. What? what Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to the KB security in the middle of the night anyway? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, it looks like you need some more evidence after all. Grr, stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. Just in case I get it wrong. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to KB security at 1 a.m. that night. <clears throat> Probably for this weird thing. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Ah, that that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. But blackmail? Yes. Basically, it says, bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, all right. At the time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with the blackmailer himself. In KB Security CEO office, a full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Uh, Erk. No, 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 no! Order, order, order! So when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB Security. Looks like a perfect case for the defense. You may see it as a perfect case, Judge, but to me. 
Well, let's just say that my Godot Blend, Godot Blend 107 impresses me a lot more. What, what are you trying to say? You say the theft was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company, but did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. Not sure what I think of that, if I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim that the defendant entered the CEO's office, but you will need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There is someone else who can testify. This person who can testify that the keycard was used at 1 p 1 a.m. that night. Mary! Who, who is this useless-looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm, not exactly. But just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. Looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working at a guard at Scabie Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is this key card. Yep, that's the key card they use in the building I work. According to the serial number, this, this one is for the CEO's office. You need, to, you need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analyzing this key card's data. <clears throat> Well, Mr. Godot, the name of the CEO of the KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but I got the keycard data here. So, so what does it show? Each keycard has its own serial number and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1 a.m. on the morning of the crime. Cool. But that means it can't be Mr. Delight dressed as Master Mask in this photo. Ha. It looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a good cup of joe. So, so then... Von Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be mask to mask. Good job, you did it, Nick! It's enough. I came perilously close to besmirching the name of the record of an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. What? What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgment, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. Hey, Angel Love. Welcome to the stream. We just finished the second case. We did it. Court is now adjourned. I know. Weird, huh? Nick, you did it. You were right after all. Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy. Oh, Mrs. Delight. I knew you could do it. I believe in you all along, Nicky boy. At least it was a comparably gen uh, gentle trial. I know, compared to the other ones we've seen. I don't know how I can even ever repay you. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick. Oh, is it? Is that it? I forgot. <laughs> what an ending. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. Gasp. But who is this woman? Oh, she she's nobody. She's just, uh, you're blushing. How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself. Youch, she slapped me. Um, Pearly, this woman is Miss Desiree Delight. She's our client's wife. Gasp, Mr. Nick? Yes, you're even worse than I thought. Going behind the back of your own client? N no, you've got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Ow, a double slap. Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? 
We got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught. You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. But actually, it was you, Miss Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh please, you're embarrassing me. If we won the case... Then why does this guy still look so glum? Uh, but I am the thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I, I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kids some time. He just got a little touch of the blues. You know about the feeling blue, right, amigo? But Mr. Godot, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Maybe you should learn my name before you call me buddy. Well, playtime is over. Huh? Earlier this early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. Kane Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? Isn't that the name of the CEO at KB Security? Wait, but body? The estimate time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. 1 a.m. on October 12th? Y you don't mean... That's right, amigo. At the same time that the, that the cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So, so then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or have you already forgotten about the piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out? What? On October 12th, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office, the scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbrued with utter rage. What are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security? It looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way! He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. N no That's a lie! It can't be true! Oh, oh, but, but I, I am a thief, I tell you! Ron Delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? What? This can't... This is impossible! She didn't even know what TV was a year ago, now she's acting like she watches soap operas every day. <laughs> yep. That's a fun switch. Yep, remember before when I said this was not a murder case? Now it's a murder case. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal between you two? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least, let me have some fun while I'm here. <clears throat> this guy, who the heck is he? He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. N Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder, and the one who established his presence as the scene was me. Yeah, Ronnie! <clears throat> arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck is going to happen next? Yes, you did, but like I said, be careful of phrases like that, D. Williams. Because it could be taken as spoilers. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor well, Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly Mr. Delight was the was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose. I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there was Mr. Nick himself. At least from what I can understand. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Um, uh, well, how about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm going to head back to Karain Village for a little while, if that's alright. Sure, but why? <coughs> I'm going to bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya, you should stay here. I want you two to spend some quality, special quality time together, full of love and happiness. 
not meant as that, and I think nobody knew. But if you say things like that, people might think that it's not. People might think that you're right. People might assume that you're just the, uh, the expert know-all person of Phoenix Wright, and will latch onto every single word you say. So just be careful in the future, alright? If it hasn't happened yet, don't comment on it. To avoid uh, spoilers and stuff. Pearls is so caught up in her fantasy that she forgot there's a murder to solve. Um... Now remember, no fighting, okay? She's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on the murder investigation. Oh, man, what to do? So, what do we do now? Isn't it obvious? We should get out of here and investigate the murder. Well, first we need to find out exactly where KB security is located. Hey, why don't we ask Miss De Delight? She should know. Besides, I want to ask her some stuff about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nicky boy. Uh, thinking of asking around, I've got a few questions of my own for Mr. Delight. Okay, well, let's make sure to go to the detention center too. You must believe... you must be relieved we got the secret urn back, huh? You bet. But there's something a little different about it. Don't qu question mark me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But this urn we got back says Ami, like it always used to. Oh yeah, you're right. Plus, the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago, when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Ami's name into I am. And that repairer was one mechanically unskilled little pearls. But still, I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. it is, is it possible that Urn is a fake? I'm sure Pearls will find out about that once she gets back to Karain Village. Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it, Maya hasn't been back to Karain Village in a long time. Poor little thing. I know. <laughs> Poor Pearls. So I guess people still go to Karain Village to do their training, right? Yep, if you want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well, lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do just that. A channeling jo dojo, huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can occur. Can happen. Is what happened last year still bothering you? That murder in her village. It happened because the power of channeling was misused. When a medium uses the Karain technique, she temporarily loses her own will. So when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, in those cases, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. Bang. <clears throat> that murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? I suppose not, but I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. Sounds like being the master of Karain is going to be a heavy responsibility. You know it. Well, let's go to each place, eh? The Treasures of Karain exhibit is all ruined now. Maya, I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about spirit channeling. Maybe I can cheer her up somehow. Well, now that we've got the sacred urn back, maybe they can reopen it. R really Sure, maybe we can label it the Urn of Mesty Mess's Desires. That would probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa! Whoa! Wow! That's brilliant, Nick! We can clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. <clears throat> oh, Maya. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wright. Miss Andrews, what's she still hanging around down here for? Um, so, how is it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? Oh, that. It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? Yes. It was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. 
Ruggy had nothing to do with it. It was Master Master's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm I'm so relieved. I just heard all about it on the news, so that detective was actually the thief all along. It looks that way right now. It's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring the to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey, Nick, if she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective Atme again? About 20 days ago. And when was it that Master Mass's calling card arrived? That was about 10 days ago. So he sent a calling card to his very, to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective Atme must have really wanted the sacred urn after all. I guess so. What? So Master Mass murdered someone as well? Well, that's how things look right now. Yes, but I thought that he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that the way that's the way he always operates. That's just what he says, so he can have an alibi while he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he was caught in the crime scene photo dressed up as Master Mess pretty well. Sacred urn. I'm so glad that you got your sacred urn back. Yes, but there's still something that bothers me about it. But what is it? I'm not exactly sure, but somehow the urn that came back seems different. R really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? N no I don't know anything. Why would I? Oh. Oh, no. Cyclox. What do you think this means, Nick? It means the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn is our very own Miss Andrews. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I don't think I can examine anything. I could try this now, but I doubt it's right right now. So let's give it a, a shot, eh? It's only two. Two measly locks, am I right? Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the sacred urn? D do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... that's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be. It could be a fake. A fake? You were the one who said it wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Oh, uh... Nope, can't do it yet. We do not have proof that the urn is a fake. But hopefully, uh... Little Pearls will help us out. Oh, Nicky boy, Maya, Miss Delight. All I wanted what to do was to help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help busting or sit beating herself up. Hey, Nicky boy, please, please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. A Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. All right, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I, I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I had no idea Miss Delight had such a valuable, vulnerable side. Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that. Anyway, Miss Delight, he might not be a killer, but he is still going around saying he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Miss Delight, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. What? 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 How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. He's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. A thief. Ha! <laughs> the very idea. Hmm. Guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different, and yet be such a happy couple. 
Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nicky boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? For, for you? Huh. I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, so then you must mean thieves. No, they're alright too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. <clears throat> By the way, why did you go to Detective Atme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. Went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously, the real Master Mask is not my Ronnie, right? Y yeah And Detective Atme knew more about Master Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. So then, you went there to ask him some questions? That's right, I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. The secretary said the ace detective isn't in right now, but I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office of his, of his a hideout. The bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Oh yeah, we saw that bag there yesterday too. <coughs> There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Miss Delight, did you know about KB Security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks she still works there, huh? And yet, according to what we heard today... Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quit. He doesn't work there anymore. It looks like Miss Delight doesn't know. KB Security is only about 20 minutes away. By motorcycle, that is. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. To make it to KB Security that fast, are you sure you aren't literally flying? Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? Um, uh, th no, I'll pass the thanks. But why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? Haha, <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Mr. Light told us the location of KB Security. Okay, let's head over there right away, Nick. Um, so was it really love at first sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers had just suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl into a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. R robbers? Yes, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I, I broke down into tears. Yeah, I would too if I were near that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running to save you? Yes, exactly. I remember he looked so handsome in, his, in that guard uniform of his. He went right up to those two knife-wielding robbers and screamed in the, their faces. Please, stop it! He screamed. I could see the robbers' faces turning pale. That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. <clears throat> then crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. <clears throat> all by himself. <clears throat> he came to save me, a total stranger, all by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow, that's a great story. Yes, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. Sniff sniff, that's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. <coughs> Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I'm ever take, get taken hostage. With Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not so distant future. Gulp. She was already taken hostage. What are you talking about? <coughs> I already told you it's not me. A sad, pitiful whine that tampers into silence. Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. Man, and we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are just going crazy, just like we are. Yesterday they thought he was just a thief, but now they've got a murder case on their hands. I guess you're right. That guard over there looks a bit on edge, too. Come on, we'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. Like... KB Security. <clears throat> so 
So I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The walls in here look thick, just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? <clears throat> hey, it's you guys. Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. That prosecutor made a real fools out of us. <clears throat> yeah, I feel for you. Wow, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Oh, that was great. You guys got what you deserve, pal. Ho 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 Or something to that effect. Do I really sound like that to you, pal? If the gumshoe fits? Um, well, anyway. The point is, a, is that I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs. And I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes, I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. <clears throat> now if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. Let's do it. Let's check this big book. Check out this big thick binder here. Leave it the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work, just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! What, what did you find out, Nick? This file? It's not about any sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about Mask to Mask. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled, it's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and the crime scenes. Hey, Nick, look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Terev Amenon, a hundred thousand dollars. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Mask to Mask stole. So that a hundred thousand is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. That number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look then. Tear of Amenon. A lot. Crown of Borgera. Bongera. A lot. Left Hand of Hades. Even more. Fortune of Magina. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> There's where the body was, I think. <clears throat> this rope! You think it fell out of the safe when it was open? I don't think so. So, you mean... Yeah, I think the string shows where and how the corpse was laying. Lying. Y you mean... The victim... He was killed by being crushed by the safe door? Sh she can't be serious, can she? Ha 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 ha. Wow, this safe is unbelievable. I bet four pearls is what fit in there. And it's got a bunch of doohickeys attached to it. It's pretty amazing, alright. Motion sensors, heat sensors, weight sensors... Hey Nick, come on, let's open it and take a look. If I broke into one of these, wouldn't that set me down the path to Hood... to Hoodlandville? Probably. This must be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super cunt soft chair. Let me try it out, just for a second. Oh, nice, I feel just like a CEO. Hey, you, whip me up a cup of some really expensive import tea and some scones. Move it. Ah, this is the life. Um, the victim sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know. Eek! Oh, my, uh. These look like some kind of bookshelf rolling cabinet hybrid. Nif, I can't get in between these two shelves. Don't strain yourself trying. It looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with bunches of files. Yeah, filled files filled with data about the security jobs. They were hired to handle. It's been a good night's reading. It'd be a good night's reading if you got insomnia. I was hoping for you something a little more, a bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. What's this thing? Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. Beep, beep, beep. Hey, cut it out. Don't press that. <laughs> That was pretty funny. I never knew Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. What is that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. It says it right there on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It used to summon security up here. Really? Then it's possible on the night of the crime. Oh, so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around there. But they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way, just so you know. 
Hmm, I think we better go and talk to that guard about the emergency buzzer. <coughs> okay. Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay. But the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What's about we put our hearts into our work? Things are really working against us right, right now and we need help. Okay, okay, I'll help you. I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. The victim's name is Kane Bullard. He was the CEO of KB Security and a pretty big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 this morning. The estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an, or an object in this room. It happened at exactly the same time that Master Mask was stealing the urn, huh? Cerebral hemorrhaging from blunt trauma to the head. Okay! It's amazing this man keeps getting rehired. Detective Gumshoe. He is, uh... He's just always around. Why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. But Billard's body, body was stashed away inside this that safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. That white string must be the shape from when it, he fell out. I think we can still need some more information about Mr. Billiard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. <coughs> so, um, what happened to Master Mask? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman. You must me again, he keeps yelling. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Oh, you mean that detective at me? Ho 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 ho. Oh, that was great. That guy what he got what he deserved. Ho 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 ho. Now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it. Adley was always around when a calling card showed up, but he always mysteriously disappeared when the heist took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was the thief. That would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah, he just did that to make himself look like a great detective. That's all. But there's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, the Terra Amenon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Oh. Hey, this guard here. Haven't I seen him somewhere before? It's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it... Who could that guard be? Oh, that prosecutor. I really don't like that guy. The way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight. Yeah, I think he did it that way just because he knew it hurt more. That's what my gut tells me anyway. So who is that Java-addicted mess maniac anyway? Prosecutor Godot? He's quite the enigma, huh? The thing is, pal, I never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right. He said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true, according to the records anyway. But, no way he's an amateur. He's an iceman in the court. A maverick that gives me, that give me goosebumps. Goosebumps? You? Yeah, I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me. They all just turned the other way. Poor Detective Gumshoe. I had no idea you were so unpopular. Ah, uh, no, that's not what I meant. That Godot guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some, some kind of dark secret. Hmm. But what, though? Where are we? Wow, this is really something else. For a security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. KB security guard. Uh-oh, I just remembered. Larry might be... Hey, Nick! What's up? Ah, uh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? And you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Hi, Larry. Here I was working my fingers to the bone, and in walks an angel. I've got no problems with a daytime date. It's all good. No, that's not what we're here for. We're investigating the Bullard murder case. Huh? Oh yeah, that's right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? You're so hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case, boy, have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? 
Hmm, well, I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya, but Nick here is a different story. But Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. That was then and this is now. What a guy. Uh, can we examine anything here? I don't remember, to be honest. Those screens there show what's going on all over the building. Everywhere. And it's my job to keep a steady eye on them. All of them. I wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Can you watch regular TV on these two? If anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working, it's Larry. Hey Maya, I'm a pro, okay? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. And how do you know that, Larry? Because that was my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. I know what you're thinking. It was a professional investigation, alright? Alright. Other doohickeys here. Wow, take a look at these things here. Hey, hey, Larry, what are they? Hmm? Did you say, hmm? Hey, man, it's not like I have to know what they are to do my job. I I always thought they were just some kind of decoration or something. Oh, boy. How did this guy ever get a job here, anyway? Hey, there's his old jacket, by the way. Hey, Larry, that's your jacket, isn't it? That's right. Um, did you know you hung it right on top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure. I was told to never, ever touch that lever. She scowled and huffed at me. Something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? So, why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. If the jacket's weight pulls the lever down, that's what they call an accident. Doesn't the sus suspense just kill you? Don't you want to know what'll happen, huh? It's true. It's killing me, too. What about you, Nick? Yeah, but for a different reason. Alright. That's my partner seat. Your partner? Well, that's what the, that's what I call her. She's my superior, actually. Kind of a weird old lady. Um, there's tea spilled all over that machine, you know? Oh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. Still works fine, more or less. They really know how to build them, I guess. Huh. People get fired for accidents like that? Ah, uh, I think he would risk it, though. Something is written on this poster in fine print. A guard, a guard's five commandments. Wow, this sounds serious. Let's see what it says. One, obey thy superior. Two, respect thy superior. Three, smile at thy superior. Four, salute thy superior. Five, buy donuts for thy superior upon command. It's signed, Wendy Oldbag, head supervisor. She's one tough old bird, let me tell you. Cross her and you come face to face with a real genuine ray gun. Yeah, sounds scary, all right. Well, fortunately, she's on vacation. That's why I'm so relaxed right now. Whew. We dodged a bullet there, guys. So what's this good info you were talking about, Ooh, Harry? Hey, I'm a guard, a pro. I can't just give away information for free. Want a bribe? I thought professionals were more, I don't know, honest. Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already. What's the good info? Hey, I like that. This kitten has got some claws. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes, so tell me. Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And actually, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. Well, one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. I know this is a, is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like maybe skipping out on a work to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. BRB. <laughs> okay, Angel Love. What is it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me. I get by alright, I guess. First, I have to keep up my eye on all those on, on those monitors all the time. <clears throat> monitors? There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh. And if I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either. If it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Well, why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the equipment. And I can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb. 
Even if it is a part-time and you are dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break. Don't try to pin the whole thing on me. That's not fair, Nick. Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Oh! Oh no. Oh no, I knew something smelled bad, and it was the butts after all. Well, it's like I always say, that was then and this is now, okay? Looks like I'm going to have to break his psych locks after all. <clears throat> well... Let's present some stuff too. Like the button. Hey Larry, there's something I want you to look at. Hey Nick, I told you I'm a pro. I don't you interrupt a pro when he's working. I'm not trying to sit and chat with you, alright? Okay, never mind. Let's attempt... Even Larry has secrets. Even Larry. That's right. Flippin' Larry. <clears throat> and his secrets. The night of the crime. On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Uh, uh, of course I was. Why wouldn't I have? But didn't you sneak out of work just yesterday to go see Miss Delight? Ah! But, but, that was that, and, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night, too? Never. Didn't, I didn't sneak out. I tell you what, I'll even bet you a dollar. A dollar? Wow, now that's confidence. What's with that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face? Do you have any evidence that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was manning his station, uh, when the murder happened is... Maybe? Yes. This is the key card to the CEO's office, right? Y yeah, that's right. This key card was found inside a wallet. This wallet? You know about this, right? I never seen it before. Liar. You hadn't delivered this wallet to Miss Delight yet just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found the this wallet? I guess it was around 1 in the morning on the first floor of our company building. <clears throat> 1 o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the murder, murder, you were away from the security guard office. Ah! So that means he was the murderer then. Y yeah, but, but there's something you didn't think about. What's that? I shift that date and it started until 10 p.m. The murderer might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10 p.m.? And it wasn't my fault. It was the fault of the guy whose shift was before mine. Why do I have the feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this? Listen up, Larry. You know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that... The killer snuck into the CEO's office after 1 p.m. during your shift. Shockingly, it's the same thing. Larry, when you use this key card, doesn't it leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't show the record to just anyone you know. That keycard data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me. Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard. Anyway, according to the data, the door to the CEO's office was open with this card. Furthermore, it was most definitely used at 1 a.m., the time of the murder. No way! Yes, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. It happened at 1 a.m. at the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Oh, Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. Yeah, no! <laughs> You're gonna lurk too, uh, Mafia, babe? Alrighty. Enjoy! Oh, I knew it. It was, it's all my fault. It's my fault that the boss was killed. My fault. Larry... There was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Ah, my Donna happened. Huh? Your Donna? I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said I have to talk to you right away. So I went to see her and he was standing he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend. It was like some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy sucked me right in the kisser. Normally, I'm the one that does the punching, isn't that right, Maya? <clears throat> yeah. So, so is that why you left the security guard office? 
Wow, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. How can I ever make up for it, Nick? What can I do? What? Wah, 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 wah. <coughs> He's curled up in on the floor crying like a baby. Oh, boy. Nick, is there anything I can do? Anything? Just name it. I'll do whatever I have to do to make up for it. I swear I will. Larry. Hey, hey, Nick, as long as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? She's r right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. Nick. What a guy. <clears throat> Would that count as manslaughter? Him leaving? I don't, I, I, I don't think so. Present. Now we can do the button. Um, the buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right. Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue. You're back. Hey! <laughs> Welcome back, Angel Love. How you doing? Didn't get him fired, but not convicted. Alrighty. So, Mr. Butts, you're fired. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, I try. Do you think you could tell us about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay, I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Buzzer. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to, um, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? I just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? It must be a, re a record, right? You must have had a look at it, right? Of course I did, and I couldn't possibly have made a mistake either. Do you think you could take just one more look for me, pretty please? Okay, I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. I don't think even Larry can make a mistake like that. Wah! What? What is it? What's wrong? I made a mistake! Huh? But, but, how? It can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once, in the morning, at around 1 a.m. 1 a.m.? But that's when the murder happened. R really Are you serious? That's terrible. It can't be. Maya, professional idiot wrangler. <laughs> yep. Maya's wrangling them all in. Uh, buzzer record. You guys have really made me reflect on the way I've been living. But the only problem is, with all this reflecting, where is the time of, for love? Frankly, I think reflecting is a bit overrated, you know? But what are you going on about, Larry? Plus, do you honestly have any new info on the buzzer record? Huh? The record? Uh, no, nothing at all. This guy reflects about as much as a piece of black carpeting. I'm not sure what else. Uh, nope. So, let's just present everything as much as we can. No. I don't think any of these would work. So, was this card that was used by the culprit that night? Well, going off on the serial number, then yeah. This card was used to open the CEO's office door at 1 in the morning. The client had this card, right? Then it's a no-brainer. He's the killer man. Nah. Not cool, bro. Um, so what about this? Huh? Maya, you shouldn't have a love letter for me. Uh, no, sorry. This is a blackmail letter. What? How do you know about that, Maya? Huh? How much is Alexis demanding this time? Huh? Who is this Alexis? Didn't we show him this letter yesterday, too? I'm pretty sure we did. Ah, that's the wallet I found. You found it when you snuck out of work to get sucked in the kisser, right? I didn't sneak out of work to get sucked in the kisser. Only I had been more responsible at work. I might have spotted the murder on the monitor like I was supposed to. Larry, you really do feel bad, don't you? Yeah, well, maybe it's all for the best. I think it's, bought, it's brought Desi and I closer together. T 
two technically it would be cause in the spot of security your nuclear retainer charged with heavy job absence and could face a one year in prison <laughs> oh dear let's hope not for larry's case just like they say every cloud has its has a silver lining you gotta see that old water glass is half full am i right now we're starting to sound like the let the larry i know don't forget nick half full I think that's all for now. And I'm pretty sure we're done with this guy, too. Maybe. Got the gumshoe. I got this right here. Sorry. It's hard to believe, but there's a limit to how much my brain can hold. I got two ears and two eyes, but I only got one brain. I can see your eyes and the ears, but the jury's still out on the brain thing. Hey, Nick, if you have something to say, just come out and say it. Heard. This was his first heist, and I guess I underestimated him. I was sure I was going to get him, so I was careless and lost the info on the witness. By witness, do you mean the guard in this photo? Yeah, he and the detective worked together to try to catch him, Master Mask. But he got away anyway, huh? That guard. I got the weird feeling that I've seen him around lately. No. It's hard to charge for, so he's probably fine. He's alright. Just checking some things out. Just seeing about this. Huh? What's that? Alright. So we did that already. Guess that's it here too. <laughs> Knowing me, I, I'm, I'm missing something. Whoops. I meant to go back to the detention center. It might be detention center time. Nope, I'm definitely missing something then. Oh boy. Yeah, I remember being stuck on this case for a while. I never remembered, like, what else I needed, needed to investigate. Well, this place is literally crawling with cops. What did you expect, now that they know he was actually masked to mask? This must be incredibly embarrassing for them, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for it by tearing the place apart. Hey, I just noticed. Gumshoe is nowhere to be seen. Well, he is a homicide detective. He's probably working at the murder case. But wasn't he in charge of the mess to mess investigation all the way up to yesterday? Well, the murder case is a lot more exciting, isn't it? He'd say something like, There's nothing like a good murder case, pal. Points for the quality of the impression, but I'm not sure Gumshoe has bloodlust, Maya. Ha 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 ha. That would be hilarious. Oh, have I examined everything here? Not the painting, but <laughs> who cares about the painting? Look at that huge frame photo. Tall mountains rising majestically against a dark and cloudy sky. There's a title written at the bottom of the photo. The greatest sunrise in m of my life. This is it? This was his best sunrise? Either this guy does didn't get out enough or he has really rotten luck with the weather. Maybe if he had lived a little longer, he would have seen some better days. Poor guy. Whoops. Alright, so we did this. Former security chief, Ron Delight. What? Ron Delight, he was the security chief? Ron, so he knew how to open the safe, huh? Yeah, sorry for raining on your parade there, pal. Oh, can I talk to him about... Nope. Whew. Yeah, this case always stumped me. This case always took me the longest to complete ever. Alright, let's present everything to this guy. Here, take a look at my attorney's badge. Are you still showing that cheap little thing off? A real man keeps his mouth shut and carries a suave police badge, pal. I still got no idea why Master Mass would go after a broken old pot like... Glare! Uh, I mean this tasteful old family heirloom. Good point. I question a worthless pile of junk like glare. I, um, I mean worthless in a good way. I mean, this is the first for the guy. Adrian Andrews hired Aunt May at security before the calling card even came. Wonder if that has anything to do with how things played out. Remember, don't let anyone about don't tell anyone about that emblem, okay, pal? Does the thief ever send these to the police? No, always to the victims. Up until now, the victims have always come to us looking for help, though. That's not what happened at the time, you mean? You got that right, pal. 
Listen up, if you guys ever get one of these calling cards, I want you to come to us right away. Got me? Yeah, sure. So, forgive me guys, this might take a while. The thief in the photo taken by the security camera is missing his, his brooch. <clears throat> yep, the thing is, there's no evidence that the photo was tampered with. It was definitely taken at 12.58 a.m. I turned the tables at the child today with the mystery of the missing brooch. I wonder if there's something more to this missing piece of costume jewelry. No. Oh, it's just the same thing. So Detective Atme wasn't hit in the back of the head after all. That's right, because he was the real thief. Wanted it to look like he was knocked out, so he bent it on purpose. I'd stake my reputation on it. Grrr, what kind of a creep would ruin an antique like that? About this blackmail letter. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about it too, pal. I would Kane Bullard have been blackmailing Ron Delight anyway. Well, Mr. Delight used to work at KB Security, right? But what it was it that made him quit? Nick, that's it. Maybe that's the same reason he's being blackmailed. Well, I'm in the middle of investigating that right now. Oh, alright. Proof that the thing is wallet and the keycard, huh? I think we need to ask Mr. Delight about some, some more about those two things. And I guess that's everything I presented to him. Alright. Is that everything now? Is he there? Damn it. Well, this is the part of the game where I, I would be stuck. I had a feeling that, that, that it would be this case. I had a feeling that it would be this case that I'd be stuck on. So let's present everything to this guy too. No thief, no one's accusing you of being a thief. It's too much work for me, making plans, writing calling cards, etc. I just pull a dine and dash at a burger joint. Burgers? I love burgers, too. Really? Well, how about it? Wanna go on a burger date tonight? At least pay for the food because I'm not defending you again. Was this the car that was used by the culprit? I think I did this one already. He's the killer. Nah. Ron's wallet. That's the wallet you found. Blackmail letter. I showed this to him, right? I showed this to him already, right? I think I can actually use to like the new Larry. This isn't anything useful. Whoops. Just checking. Just checking. This is one of those I'm 100% lost kind of things now. Sorry, everyone. This is the part of the stream where I, or the part of the game where I would just present everything to everyone, examine every possible thing. It's unnecessary, Nick. You don't have to threaten me. I'll tell you what I know. I know it's tough to tell, but I'm really sorry about what happened. Well, I've never seen Larry look so serious. I actually believed him. Yeah, he's like a totally different person. In that case, maybe you and I should get re reacquainted. Nah, nothing new here. Maybe there's something new... with Desiree? Nope. Nope. No. 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 Ha ha ha, you're so funny sometimes, Nicky boy. If I were a famous thief, I'd live in a great big gorgeous mansion. Better tell that to your husband. Ah, I know what that is. That's one of those key cards from Ronnie's company. Come to think of it, it's been a long time since I've seen one. That's probably because Ron doesn't work there anymore. That's Ronnie's wallet. It was found at KB Security on the night of the murder. Barney and I went out of dinner earlier that evening. I'm sure he had his wallet with him then. So is it true then? He must have dropped it all at the crime scene. 
Um, do you know what about this? Oh, it's that letter addressed to my Ronnie. Sorry, but I hate it when people poke their noses into other people's business. Looks like Miss Delight doesn't know about it, which means she has no idea that her husband was being blackmailed. No. No. Nope. Nope. No, you can't show her that yet. Top secret. So happy you got your secret earned back. Well, I have to thank you for that, Miss Delight. And I'm sorry. Huh? What are you apologizing for? Because I mistakenly blamed your husband for taking it. Ha, I told you, didn't I? My Ronnie could never do such a thing. Excuse me, but would you take a look at this? Nope. And there's nothing new here. Any new thing to examine, maybe? Like this again? So Ron received a blackmail letter, huh? I think Miss Delight knows about this. Well, if she did, I don't think she would have been smiling at like that. But we should tell her about it. I think it'd be smarter if we didn't. I might need to look up a guide on what to do next, guys. I am 100% lost here. Alright. Give me a second, everyone. I am completely 100% lost on what to do. It's been a long time, and my memory sucks, so give me a second. Uh, white poster, orange jacket, green screen, night of the crime. Oh, uh, we have to go to Aegean, I guess. I thought we did that already, though. We did the aging and stuff already. Yoo-hoo! Uh... Secret burn. So, all of this has been done. Talk. Everything's been done here. I feel like I've softlocked the game, guys. Nothing's, like, happening. It feels like I've done everything. Alright, let's start from the very beginning now. Demas hideout. Uh, talk to Desiree. I did all of that. Moved to the CEO's office. Examine the folder in front of the room. I did that. Red, red buzzer. I did that. What happened? Detective Ant May, Professor Go, Go Dot. Oh, I gotta present people's. F I forgot about that. I gotta present people's faces too, guys. Oh my god. No wonder why it took so long. I wasn't used to that part of the game yet. Sorry. No, I can't do AG and Psyche Lock yet. Detective Go Gumshoe, uh, tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebeard. That's Kane Buller, not Shane Bluebeard, Bard Pal. Oh, yeah, the victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbing like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick. <clears throat> now is our chance to get more info about the victim, so hurry up and ask. We have to do the pictures, guys. The pictures of people, too. Not just the evidence. Can you tell, can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company has basically sent security teams out to build buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets doing this kind of work. Oh, and? And, I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grabber. Really? Me too. I just love money. I can't ever get enough. Please stop leaning in toward me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. <clears throat> anyway, looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Oh, so that's my problem. You need to be shiftier. Let me go already. 
Apparently, he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Oh, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah. Oh, KB Security used to head security operations against Master Mask. What? Really? Yeah, and after screwing up so many times, the company's reputation really took a, really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Okay, now can I go to the, uh, place? Ha-ha! Ta-da! There he is! Ah, Mr. Wright! Mr. Delight, did they finish their interrogation? Yes, but... Please don't leave me alone anymore! Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? What? well, er, you see... When, on the same night the sacred urn was stolen from the Lordly Taylor Department Store, a blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB Security to hand over some money, and then that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But, there's only one Ron Delight, am I right? So the only question is, what, where, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth. Your life depends on it. Uh, okay. Mr. Delight, you still insist that you are masked to mask? Isn't that what they've been saying since yesterday? That was the quick response. Tell me about it. To be honest, it's starting to get irritating. But, but, listen, Mr. Delight. At the trial today, we learned that the true identity of the thief, didn't we? <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival of my worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. I guess it's true. I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, you were at KB Security at the time. So then the person dressed up as Master Mask in this photo, it's gotta be Detective Atme. So that night, you didn't go to Lordly Taylor, you went to KB Security, right? Yes, I went to KB Security at the time the blackmail note said I should. Alright, what happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. So then I used the keycard to unlock the door. That's probably when he dropped his wallet. <clears throat> when I went into the CEO's office, someone was in there. Someone? Ah! Then suddenly, they bashed me over the head. Bam! Was it Kane Buller that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. Ew. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So that's why you put it in the safe? Yes, that's right. I used to be the chief of one of the security teams, so I knew how to open it. Okay, and what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there, for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in, in that building. So I knew how to avoid being spotted by them. Nick, all of a sudden, Mr. Delight kind of sounds like the murderer to me. Please don't say that. Mr. Delight, is it true that one year ago, you worked, you were forced to quit KB Security? Uh, uh how did you... I'm begging you, please don't tell Desi, please! D don't worry, you haven't told anyone yet. Well, thank goodness. Er, no, I, um, but I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. She'll find out eventually. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Desi would despise me if she ever found out I was living a life of crime. A criminal, a thief, she'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends money like it's water. There's no job in the world that could bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least, that's what I thought anyway. So he became mess to mess for Des Desiree, huh? Well... What about... that? The buzzer went off just once around the time that Billard w Bullard was killed. Oh, that that's scary. Do you know anything about that, Mr. Delight? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't. Why am I not surprised by how clueless he is anymore? Hey, this is an article about my debut heist. 
Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were hot on my trail. But Master Mask, he must have gotten away, right? It says in the article that he disappeared. That's right. I got a sudden burst of inspiration in my Master Mask costume in a nearby plastic bucket. And I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, eh? Wow, awesome. Hey, hold the phone. Regarding this photo, is this you, Mr. Delight? Hee <laughs> hee, that's right. Nick tr nice trick if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even pearls could see through that, that in a heartbeat. But as you might expect, Detective Atme found the disguise. He truly deserves the title of Ace Detective. Detective Atme found the Master Master's disguise? Hmm, that's interesting. Yes, and I heard that he brought it home with him. So, that's it. That's when Ed Atme got his hands on this. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. That must have been really time-consuming, huh? Yes, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that, I received the first of the blackmail letters. But blackmail letters? Y you got them starting when? Tell me more now. H hey, calm down. Don't get so worked up. Blackmail. This blackmail letter, is this the first one you got? No, of course not. But this is the first one that ever called me out to a specific location. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the tear of Eminon Kate heist. That first letter, it said, I know you did it. So someone found out about your true identity? Just like that? Ah, uh, it's not easy being a master thief, you know. I've got proof that it was you, so give up. It went on to say, so in the end I had to give up the treasure I went through all that trouble to steal. Is that right? Hey, hang on a second. What do you mean you had to give it up? Oh, don't worry. After I put the jewel in the safe deposit box the letter specified, someone sent me $10,000. No one said anything about me being worried, you, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. But plans? Hmm. What are these plans you're talking about? They were instructions on how to steal a crown or a painting or some other rare treasure. They showed security blind spots, escape routes, and even suggested training methods. So you mean that the one who planned the heist weren't you? No, it wasn't. I only planned the very first one. After that, I received the plans from some very c c kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to that person that was blackmailing him. So Ron Delight was Master Mask after all? But someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned them all out in detail. Who could that be? All I had to do was deposit the treasure I stole into the safe deposit box, and I just waited for the crash to cash to come in at the mail. I just tried not to look so gleeful about it. So you went after that sacred urn because of one of those plans too? Well, see, truth is, I've never seen the urn. All I did was follow the instructions and steal what I t was told to steal. Mr. Delight, is everything you've just told me the truth? Yes, but, but please don't tell Desi, okay? Ron, before we go, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Y yes but, but please don't hurt me. Mr. Kane Bullard, do you swear that it wasn't you who killed him? Y yes of course. I could never- I'm not lying. All I did was hide the body in the safe. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did, so I turned myself in yesterday. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Delight at his wor word. Mystic Maya! Hey, Pearly. I'm back! Hey, Pearls. So what have you been up to this whole time? The secret urn, Mr. Nick. I took it back to Karain Village to have it examined. And and what did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. They said it's the real urn. Woo! That's a relief. I was really worried. <coughs> but there's one small problem. Problem? Um, these cute little pink splotches. They said that it's paint and that they were to put they were put on the urn recently. Why are we talking about the pink splotches again? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? We've got to find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yeah, Mr. Nick, we've got to find out how they got there. Uh, okay, okay. We'll go find out how they got there. But please don't forget about me. Alright. 
now we can go to the D mask hideout. Or not the hideout, the uh the Lordly Taylor place. Now it's time for the Psyche Lock. Psyche Lock. Oh Pearl, how nice to see you. <coughs> uh, hello there. I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I wasn't having this urn examined. Uh oh, I see. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn, we can figure out the mystery of what actually happened here. Nick, let's look around one more time. So do we actually need to look around more? Or can we do the psyche lock thing, the psych lock thing? Sorry, I've been calling psyche, psyche lock all these years. Hard to go back to the other thing. Miss Andrew, do you know anything about the sacred urn? Alright, we read all this already. Do you have evidence the urn that was submitted is genuine? Yes. Sorry to break it to you, but the urn is the genuine article. Pearls went back to Karain Village and had it examined. Is, is that right? That's nice, but I don't see how... What she discovered was that the urn had been broken. Again. D did you say, again? Yes, it was broken once a year ago, and now it looks like the same thing has happened. And quite recently, too. For real, recently? Are you saying this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Do I have... I'm missing a thing. I'm missing something, guys. This box. There's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box that the secret urn was in. It looked like there's some pink paint on it, too. And it's definitely the same color as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got on it now. Alright, let's investigate again, Nick. There we go. And... It looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of it is shaped oddly and it's shocking pink. Mr. Nick, could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. Ah, that's the box the sacred urn was in. If you look here, there's a little bit of paint on the box as well. Wow, you're right. Look, it matches. What is it, Mr. Nick? This is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. There we go. I think it's all starting to become clear. We're that much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. Now let's save the game. And now let's do the present. was broken recently. How do you know? I'm gonna assume it's this. Nope. Alright, to the guide. I forgot. <laughs> oh, my memory sucks, guys. My memory is the worst. So, Mr. Wright, huh? Why do you think it was broken recently again? Uh, well, because, um, I just think so. Sorry, but that's not a valid explanation. Grrr, that hunter has become the hunted. Oh, give me a second. Okay. How do you know? Present... Treasure Exhibit Poster. That's why we have the guides, yep. This poster, it was made recently, right? Poster? Ah, the poster for the exhibit! At the time when this photo was taken, the urn said, I am on it. But now, for some mysterious reason, it says, Amy, Ami. When the urn was fixed, the letters were transposed. Ah! I am? What does that even mean? I don't know anything about it. I wasn't even there when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now tell me the truth. Ah, w wait. Four. Uh, even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. 
Huh? Yes, that's it. it. Must have been one of the people at the photo shoot. You probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Hmm, looks like she's not going to give up that last psyche lock so easily. Do you have any proof the urn was broken here at Lordly Taylor? Uh, the answer is... Paint marks! Well, Miss Andrews, um, what is this supposed to mean? There is paint, pink paint all over this urn. Yeah. And there is pink paint all over the floor and walls of the basement warehouse. In other words, this urn was broken here. You can't weasel out of this one, Miss Andrews. But, but... Uh-oh. She's trying to make her escape. But, but, you can't just get... You can just get pink paint anywhere. Well, there's none in my office, that's for sure. But, well, there is in my room. Liar. And anyway, the paint on the urn and the paint on the floor, there's no proof that it's the same paint. Come on, this is getting ridiculous. The proof linking the paint on the urn to the paint on the floor is... This box. The urn was stored in this, right? Y yes that's right. Well, there's pink paint on this box as well. Ah! I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Y yes more or less. The paint on the floor had an odd shape imprinted in it, doesn't it? Y yes If you put this box into the impression in the paint, you can see it fits perfectly. Which means the box was dropped right here over- was dropped right over there. And that is when the urn was, was broken. Your name does do you justice, Mr. Wright. Woo! And my health is healed. I'm so sorry. I was the one, the one who broke the urn. Boy, does this make me feel like some sort of evil school teacher. I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, but I tried to hide what I did. Well, that's not so hard to understand, is it, Pearly? N no not at all. I, I know just how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago, just after the poster photo was taken on the day, same day the urn arrived here. I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. When I tripped on the paint can and lost my balance, the box I was carrying crashed to the ground. Crash. I heard a terrible noise and thought my heart was going to stop. Fearing the worst, I opened the lid of the box that's when, and that's when it happened. Oh dear. The broken pieces of the urn fell right, fell out of the box and landed right in the paint. I, I, I was in shock. I let out a huge scream. Like this. Eek. Hmm, I can totally see how that could have happened. Yeah, as clumsy as she is, I'm sure Maya understands. While I knew it was the most important treasure in all of Karain Village, so I tried so hard as I could to fix it. Fortunately, the shards were pretty big. And that's when I, the I Am got changed to, a, to Ami? I, I didn't know how it was originally written, but any sane person fixing it would have assumed it said Amy. Ami? Any sane person? Really? Oh, pearls. She said she wasn't very good at spelling. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom, and no one had seen it since then. But there's something I don't get. When we first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Well, that's because it was so ugly and, and embarrassing. I used the golden statue to cover it. The Ami face statue? Aha! The first time that we came down here, it was on the night that the sacred urn was stolen. But Mr. Nick... There were no paint marks on the walls or floor of the warehouse when we were here. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive in the Mountain Hall training hall. And I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for the for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. Um, but there's still one thing I find strange. What is it, Pearl? The day after the urn was stolen, we came here again. At that time, the statue had been moved and the paint was clearly visible. She's right about that. Well, Miss Andrews? Huh? What? I... er... I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Well, but who was it? Who would have done it and why? On the day before the theft, the statue was definitely closer to the door. 
Then the next day, it was moved, but why? It looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. But why? Why do you think so, Nick? Because that night, the real thief, Ron Delight, was at KB Security. So then why did another master mask show up here? A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow, but... It looks like that thief is going to make, be making another appearance. Mm -hmm. Do we know who the murderer is, guys? Does anyone have any ideas? Whew! That took me a while, huh? Hey, Nick. What is what, what? What is it this time? You won't believe how many people are here for the trial. Uh, not quite yet. Don't know quite yet. Well, that it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door? Why don't you know this, Nick? Ah, uh, they're having Detective Atme's trial today. Detective Atme? They say they're going to try him as Masty Mask. Already? That was fast. Boy, I'd love to see Masty Mask's trial. I know. By the way, where's Pearls? Oh, she went back home. She said she can't neglect her training anymore. I know you don't like me. Pearls has really gotten into her training lately, huh? Weirdly, you have your... Suspicion? <laughs> What's your suspicion? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Please, don't ignore me! Oh, Mr. Delight, good morning. No one likes me. No one would notice me, even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. Wh wait a sec. You don't mean... You're the murderer? N n no no I'm just a poor thief. No, wait, that's not right. A thief can't really be poor. Now let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending him to help him commit the heist. Do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murderer, Nick? It's possible. But today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. And here we go. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You're ready. Pre -pre Preparation is the last refuge of the week. Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with your opening statement, Mr. Godot. Godot. Ah, uh, he's got the judge in the palm of his hand. Yet again. I think... Wait, let me get into my... You think it was Desiree? You don't think Ron actually went to the office to deal with... Uh, the guy? You think Desiree found the blackmail and went to deal with it? That way... Her way got mad to be with the, the person. We'll see if that's true. We'll see. Ah, he's got the judge in the palm of his hand yet again. Ron Delight is simply too young to be sent to war. That's all. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. Ha, then you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war, but that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. That's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Any suspicion? Probably wrong, but hey, it's a suspicion nonetheless. Ho oh, ho. Yes, well then, let me sum briefly summarize the details of this case. Wow, Judge is taking charge like he knows what what's going on for a change. <clears throat> the victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in a safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated at 1 a.m. of the previous day. And, that's when our little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. Very well then, Mr. Godot, please call your first witness. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial. 
but the first one is always the best. Um, Mr. Godot, your witness? <clears throat> okay then, let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, has to say for himself. The defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It may be a bit of a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. <clears throat> we have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ha! You've got guts, Trite. Alright then, Mr. Ron Delight, please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh? No, 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 no! Th that's not true! Hmm... For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. Ah, uh, well, Mr. Delight already looks plenty guilty with that face he's making. And once he opens his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own coffin. Ha! Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bullard, why did you go to KB Security? Well, well, I... that's kind of hard to say, boy. I wish I could go home. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. My visit to KB. That evening, around 1 a.m., I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I'd been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. 1 a.m., the exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate, the strong drink it up. The 17 cups of coffee, coffee, unhealthy by the way. Ha, it's bitter today too, just like my destiny. You never know from that way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you please. Think here. It ordered you to go there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Uh, death very unhealthy. And the amount of caffeine, yes. But he's mostly just going to seriously need to pee. Maybe he's immune to peeing. Maybe he's. I don't know. <laughs> It was the first time I got in a blackmail letter. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters then? Oh, of course. They say things like, steal this or take that. <laughs> Why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more. Now, what should I do? So, when did the, what did the blackmail letter say in question say? It said to bring $50,000. Money, eh? A perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but but wait, wait! I never intended to pay pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to, to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Hmm, an important boy indeed. Witness, let's have that added to your testimony. Yes, sir. Ha! A muddy mud skipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. <laughs> Uh, didn't it scare me? It wasn't gonna cause me trouble or anything. But first, I gotta do this. You used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Hmm, this isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. speed up the heart to high, it's not because of the exhaustion. So 17 cups would kill a person, which means Godot is some kind of superhero or something. Do tell us why you were fired. W well, the world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Uh, okay, then I take it back. Defendant, please answer the question. I, well, I needed money. You needed money? 
Um, well, you see, Tessie loved to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. And it was actually the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough, so I stole data from the company. Come again? KB Security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies, and since I was a security team chief, you stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullard found out, and I was fired immediately. Why? I wish I had never asked that. I was somehow able to keep it secret and made it seem like I had quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. <laughs> sure told you. So you admit that you stole the data from your company, is that correct? Y yes I'm sorry. This is a very important fact. Please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worst. Crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. Caffeine is just hard for the body to break down. You wouldn't be getting... You wouldn't be getting good sleep. So... The blackmail threat didn't scare me. Wasn't gonna cause me trouble or anything. The right thing to do here is... Desiree! Mr. Delight, what you just said now doesn't match with what you told me yesterday. Huh? What, what doesn't? I think you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person finding out your secret. Gulp. A certain person. Miss Desiree, Desiree Delight, the defendant's wife. Wah! But, but I... Listen to me. My Desi. She's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end with before it truly begins. Grrr, Godot. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife, someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Oh. Hmm. No. Everything is falling neatly into place for him. D don't talk about my Desi like that, or you'll be sorry. Heard of a story about what you just said? <laughs> what? What kind of story? Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Mr. Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whiffed in just 20 minutes. Clearly there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who just cared a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Uh, what happened at the crime scene at 1 in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now. Tell us. We're all ears. <clears throat> it's a little tough for me to read chat, by the way, because I currently have the guide up at this point. I remember none of the stuff here. You can tell that I'm not familiar with this case all that much. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there dead. Ah, uh, I see. Suddenly hit on the forehead, huh? I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Mestimest -Mest struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Atme turned out to be the culprit himself, that was all a lie. Once an obituary about caffeine. Caffey overdose. Sheesh. Don't drink a lot of coffee, guys. It's a good thing I don't like coffee, huh? Ha. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What? what are you saying? I really was attacked. We'll find out what if, if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trite. Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. All right. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. That? 
could you please cl clarify to wh what you are referring to? Why, my mask to mask costume, of course. W wait just a moment. Mask to mask? Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as mask to mask. And then, I descended upon the office at the of the K CEO of KB Security. What? But any coffee connoisseur would never get that close. <laughs> good. Unless it was Godo. Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait, that's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just slip your mind? Ha! A six cup of coffee is staring up at me coldly. Six cups? How badly in are we right now? At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. I'd have been killed if I hadn't been wearing my mask to mask costume. Why were you dressed up as mask to mask? Why, because I'm mask to mask, of course. W what are you talking about? Mr. Damascus trial is being held next door. Uh, y yes, I guess so. Anyway, at the time, I thought I was being blackmailed over the Mr. Mask issue. <coughs> so I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's really pain to move around with that cape. That's why it took a lot longer than I expected. Took a lot longer? What is he talking about? Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh, opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Buller's body. What, what, what was that? Back up a second. Yes? You were in, You were the one that hit the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! It's a group people I know are crazy. College does thing to you, so that happens to college peoples. Why? Just why? What reason could you have? What were you thinking? Question: When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? The answer is simple: When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hid the body because he was the murderer? Ha! So you're not as stupid as you look. His metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business, do you? Uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to, your, to the testimony. Y yes sir. Uh-oh, looks like the storm front is moving in on over the Fairweather Judge. Uh, I panicked and hid the body in the safe. It took about ten minutes. Really? Ten minutes, huh? Objection! <laughs> College students, students do dumb things. <clears throat> That's funny. Sad, but funny too. Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? And, and what might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that con connects the CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, a security team is supposed to come running. And according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? What? If Mr. Rundelight truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as the buzzer sounded. After all, the security guard would have been heading his way. Ha. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there was security personnel, personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There's no way he wouldn't have known about them. But, as it turns out, the guard never came. That was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity, was not... and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Delight could have known. Ha! Again, remember who we're dealing with here. 
It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. This buzzer is extremely loud. There is no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? Ugh. Fine. Let's hear your theory. <coughs> Monster Energy, Espresso Shot, Gatorade, Stay Up to Study, Dude that nearly had a heart attack, oh dear. That's no good. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed, I'm willing to wager that he was not unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And in that, and that's why, he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out, and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now, unless my client was able to hide, hit the buzzer while he was unconscious, it can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right, whoever it was that knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Uh, order in the court! Mr. Wright, th this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Ron Delight is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Alright, give me a second. I think I can do the chat right now. Alright, I, I don't need the guide anymore for now. Then who pressed the buzzer? It was the victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant attacked him. He didn't die right away. He must have held. He must have held long enough to push the button. Ah. Hmm. So Kane Bullard sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene. But how? Can I prove that it wasn't Kane Bullard who sounded the buzzer? Uh. I can prove it. All right. The defense's opinion is this, Your Honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. Uh... There are no fingerprints. Wasn't the victim. I believe this is the piece of incontrovable evidence uh, you were looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give us some give some thought on what you should say before opening your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself the clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself, naturally he would have left his fingerprints behind. Whoa! R Gun delight. Obviously wipe them off. Why would he? Why would he? A card could have a guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button. I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Master Mask. And Master Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have to wipe the button for your fingerprints? Order, order, order! Ha! It would seem. I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in extra danger? What is with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Ha, it looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. J just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1 a.m. And Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed. Security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Ho-ho. 
You got some guts. I like that. And an, an opponent. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? Uh. Just in case they choose wrong. Godot seems very unprepared in comparison to Von Karma and Edgy Boy. Well, this is his first trial. So maybe he's a, a rookie. Or something like that. The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And that was exactly what they wanted. D do you mean to say that the killer called, called the guard on purpose? Yes. Although, as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned in the, at, at, the, at the time. Ha. What a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in? No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, King Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Rhonda Light, who was out cold. And the third person, the real killer. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Rhonda Light. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. Yes, that was precisely the real killer of killer's objective. To frame Rhonda Light for the murder. Order, order, order! Ha, it would seem. I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been made t to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Er, wait, wait a second. I'm the one and only mask to mask, so... Nick, you mean the real killer is... We're going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity, and they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Hmm, now then let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Ron Delight for the murder of Kane Bullard? It was none other than Desiree Delight. Yes, Captain Chips. You are... actually wrong. Detective Luke Atme. He's the only one who could have done it. Ace Detective... Luke Atme? You mean... Master Mass did it? Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Master Mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order, order! Mr. Wright, explain yourself! Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. When Luke Atme confessed, there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked as, well, as Master Mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. That was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Master Mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lordly Taylor. In, order, in other words, being found guilty as Master Mask was Luke Atme's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict? As an alibi? <clears throat> Clever. You know, it's almost time. For for what? For Luke Etme's verdict. It was pretty. It was a pretty simple trial, after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. That's assuming you have proof that the detective was the one who committed the murder. Mr. Luke Etme's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide ad adequate proof of his true crime, Mr. Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. 
Am I really sure about this? Ha. A bet's only good when your life's on the ante. Mr. Wright, I, I believe in you. Mr. Delight. So, so, please. I'm begging you. Thanks, but a decision will determine the rest of your life. Can you really risk your life like this? Phoenix. What, what was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path you trust, of trust. Th that voice, it sounded like, or it sounded like... M mia Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Ha, so that's your answer, huh? Very well, I'm decided as well. This court will now take a 20 minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke at me to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. Meanwhile, in a district court. Hehehehe. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> well, Sir Detective at me. <laughs> I have to say, Mr. Payne, you perform splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Atme, you were the one who... That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant, Luke Atme. Another judge? Wait, don't hand down your verdict yet, please. Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. Who's this hoser, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. And I wish to file an, ac an accusation against this man, Luke Atme. Uh, accusation? You accuse Master Mask? That man is not Master Mask. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? what Whew. Well, fellas. That is where we're going to end today's stream. Next time we beat this, or next time we play this game, we will, uh, conquer the second episode. But yeah, I got lost a lot this, this one. You can tell that this case isn't actually my favorite case in the world. It's good, but it's very confusing, especially on, like, a first playthrough. It's still confusing to me now. But yeah, we're gonna beat it next time and move on to case three. But, of course, tomorrow will be more Dargan quests, so look forward to that. Thank you all for coming. Hope you had a good time, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye